Good day, good day everyone, and once again we are back together. Alright, so we're looking at quadratic number patterns or quadratic sequences. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you're part of the family. And of course, you can always get in touch with us. All right. Um, by the way, we are looking at this uh, from uh, the 2018 uh, DBE exam. All right. So uh, in this case, this is the question. So this uh, the quadratic number pattern for P11, Q and 22. So those are the uh, different terms of the sequence has a constant second difference of one. Show that P is equals to seven and Q is equal to 16. Now, First of all, we remember that the quadratic sequence uh, has got, uh, you know, its general term or rather the general uh, pattern of the sequence uh, is a n squared uh, plus b n uh, plus c, right? Okay, so in this case, what, we, what they've given us are the different numbers or the different terms in this case. So we've got 4, we've got p we've got 11, we've got Q, and we've got 22, right? Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the different terms. So let's take the first difference, right? So that's the first difference of the sequence. So the first difference would look something like, uh, in fact, I want to just use a different color there. So the first term would be P minus 4, right? The second term would be 11 minus P. The third term would be Q minus 11. And the last term would be, well, the fourth term, not the last, but the uh, 22 minus Q, right? So that's the first term of the sequence, right? Uh, the first difference, rather. So the second difference, which, by the way, they said to us is equal to 1, would look something like, so that would be 11 minus P, so the first term minus, I mean, term 2 minus term 1 of the first difference. So that's 11 minus P, subtract, please put it in brackets, that's P minus 4, right? Okay, and the next term would be Q minus 11, and we're going to subtract there, 11 minus p right and of course uh, so that's one term that's another term and the last term would be 22 minus q subtract there uh, q minus 11 okay right now please note all of these are equal to one because they told us that the second difference has a constant um, uh, or rather we have a constant uh, second difference, which is 1, right? So that means that if I take this 11 minus P, okay, that entire expression there, 11 minus P minus P minus 4 is equal to 1. Now let's try and solve that. So that's 11 minus P minus P plus 4. Remember that the, uh, the sign multiplies into the bracket. This is equal to 1. So this would be 11 minus 2p plus 4 is equal to 1. And so 11 plus 4, that will give us 15 minus 2p. This is equal to 1. And negative 2p, if I take the 15 to the other side, it becomes negative. And 1 minus 15 would give me negative 14, right? So divide both sides by negative 2. And so P would be equal to 7. All right. So now that's the first answer. So we've proven that P is equal to 7. Now I'm going to take the second one. So I'm going to take the second term in this case of our second difference. Right. So we've got Q minus 11 minus okay so i was supposed to put this in brackets sorry about that okay so that's q minus 11 minus 11 minus p right so that's m subtract 11 minus p and this is equal to 1 again because they did say 
that all the second difference or, or rather uh, the second difference rather is equal to one right so we've got q minus 11 that's minus 11 plus p remember the negative sign multiplies inside the bracket so this is equal to one so we've got q minus 22 plus now p remember is equal to seven so i'm going to just substitute that there and this is equal to one and so we've got q which is equal to uh, in this case if we have negative 22 plus seven which will give us negative 15 right now if we take that to the other side it becomes positive 15 so 1 plus 15 would be equal to 16 right so our q value is 16 so we've proven what they've asked us to prove that p7 and q is 16 right now we go on to the next question they say determine the general term of the quadratic pattern right so remember this is how we express the quadratic the quadratic sequence or the quadratic pattern right so we must express it exactly like that okay so we are going to look for the a value for the b value um, and for the c value right uh, but what i'm going to do is just rewrite that pattern there so that's 4.2 so that's 4 remember p is 7 we've got the value of p and then the next value was 11 and we had q which was 16 and the last one was 22 right so now remember what we're going to do is find the first difference right of the pattern okay so our first difference that's 7 minus uh, uh, 4 remember we said in this case we take term 2 minus term 1 so that will give me 3 right and if I take 11 minus 7, that would give me 4. Uh, if I take 16 minus 11, that would give me 5. And 22 minus 16, that would give me 6, right? And just like we had said, we know that the constant difference, uh, I mean, the, sec the second difference is equal to 1. And it proves it that we've got one there. Now, what you need to keep in mind is that for the quadratic sequence, right, a constant difference, second difference is 2a, right? So 2a is equal to one. And for the first term of the first difference, that would be 3a plus b, right? And for this term here of the actual sequence, the first term of the sequence, that would be a plus b plus c. Now we're looking for the value of a, b, and c respectively, right? So we know, first of all, that 2a is equal to 1. And so if we divide both sides by 2, so it means that a is equal to a half, right? And then um, we've got, uh, in this case, uh, 3a plus b is equal to 3 so let's look for the b value so it means that uh, 3 remember a is already 1 over 2 plus b is equal to 3 so if we take the value of b in this case that would be 3 over 2 plus b is equal to 3 and so b will be equal to 3 over 2 so that would be 3 minus 3 over 2 and you'll realize that gives us 3 over 2. So that's the value of B. Now we look for the value of C. So A plus B plus C is equal to, remember the first term of the sequence is 4. So this would be equal to 4. But we've got the A value, 1 over 2. We've got the B value, 3 over 2. And we've got the C value, which is equal to 4. And so C... Right, so 1 over 2 plus 3 over 2, that will give us 4 over 2, which is 2, right? Um, and in this case, that would be 4 minus 2, and so C would be equal to 2, right? So this has to be, uh, or is dealing with the addition of fractions, right? So C would be equal to 
2. Right, now, which means that the nth term, okay, of the quadratic sequence is 1 over 2 n squared plus 3 over 2 n plus 2. And so that's how we would solve that. All right, so we found out what is the general term of our sequence. Now they say determine the value of n if tn is 232. So that's 4.3. Okay, so they say determine the nth term if tn is 232. 32. I've written that correctly, right? Okay, yeah, 232. So that means that I'm going to have half n squared plus 3 over 2n n, uh, plus 2 equals to 232. Now we're going to solve this as a quadratic function, right? Um, if I take this to the other side, I've got 1 over 2. Uh, n squared plus 3 over 2 n. Okay, so 2 minus 232, that would give me negative 230. And this is equal to 0. What I'm going to do is multiply throughout by the inverse, right, uh, of that coefficient of a half. So uh, remember, so I'm going to multiply everything by 2 over 1 so that I get rid of that half there. So in this case, that gives me n squared plus 3n minus 460, and which is equal to 0. All right, we're going to have to just uh, work this out. Factors of 460 such that when you multiply them, I mean, when you subtract them, uh, they'll give you 3. Um, let's see, if I divide that by 60, uh, no, uh, 460. If I divide it by 20, let's see, 460 uh, divide by, yeah, there we go, there we go. So if I divide it by 20, I get 23, and 23 minus 20 will give me uh, a 3, So it, which means my factors are... Now, nothing wrong if you chose to use the quadratic formula here, right? If you haven't watched our, our, our videos on the quadratic formula, please just do so, or even on factorization. So I'm going to have 23 and 20, right? And in this case, that means that is positive and that is negative. Please watch our videos on factorization, ladies and gents, right? So n is negative 23 or n is equal to 20. Now, of course, you can never have a negative for your answer, in this case, for the value of n, because it has to be natural numbers. So this is not applicable. And so it means that n is equal to 20. All right. I hope that is clear, ladies and gents. Um, right. So we go on to the next one. Uh, in fact, you know, I have a, I had a look at this question and it was a little bit long. So what I'll do is let me do it in the next video. OK, so let's park this one 4.4 because I want to show you how to do that. So you have to have watched this one uh, in, in, in order to continue. All right. So for now, I am going to pause this uh, here. And of course, I'll see you into the next video as we do that question. For now, I'll see you next time. Shop shop.